started in 2005 or so, and then we had our first stage breeding in 2008, where Koya had come on to get us to that point. Um, and then this year we did some open auditions uh, to, to find some artists, and then we also uh, recruited, uh, Koya recruited some additional artists. So it was a mixture of sort of people we didn't know off the street, and then people that uh, folks of us had had relationships with in the past. Well, when looking for these artists, was a determining factor where they came from, or their sense of pride, or their ethnicity, or were you just looking for poets that wanted to hit a microphone? No, not uh, we were looking for poets and strong performers, people who, who had a real presence on stage. Uh, part of the audition process, I think it's fair to say, um, was to ask them to do a piece on Chicago, uh, because we already knew that that theme was there, but we didn't care what they had to say about Chicago, we just wanted to know that they had a point of view. Is that a fair? Yeah, and that people had different points of view. So it wasn't that we were like, okay, we need one Puerto Rican, we need one Mexican, we need somebody who's Irish. It's like it casting like the that, Spice right? Girls are but sporty and baby. <laughs> but it really was about, you know, if we asked you to write about Chicago, um, who's coming with a unique perspective from once we already have in the show? And that's how we get something that really looks at the whole picture of what it is to be in Chicago. I have to say, as a newbie, I'm really excited because I've heard it, this has been an evolutionary process from like the reading to this, what was, what's happening now, this, this staged, you know, this choreography. It's so exciting that it's it went from reading to like you know this production. You know, you're saying choreography. When you're talking poetry, I'm okay. thinking the vocal stylings of choreography. I'm thinking footwork. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I'm confused. We have the well, the choreography mm -hmm. is, is a, a, a different kind of language. So the movement and what you do with your body is a, a different way of expressing it in the language. So we thought, okay, so we have these beautiful pieces about Chicago. How do we um, create movement to them? But they, they get down some of these pieces <laughs> 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 we were just rehearsing a piece <laughs> that we've nicknamed Sexy Blues Lady. <laughs> the rest will yeah. be censored. It's not a burlesque, but we definitely, it's about a raunchy blues singer named Big Time Sarah. So we have to pay tribute to her in the show. In my head right now, I'm envisioning <laughs> Jesse Jackson doing Green Eggs and Ham on <laughs> SNL auditioning for tour guides. Yes. And this, this coming weekend is the first, so you're going to have Fridays and Saturdays mm -hmm. at El Capitol, 777 North Ted Della Green Street, in the Chicago Center for Performing Arts. And this is just like any other event that if you go to theaterland.com, they'll be able to uh, purchase tickets. Well, actually, they can purchase tickets through the Guild Complex's website, which is www.guildcomplex.org. Um, the tickets are going through our um, site through Brown Paper Tickets, which uh, people okay. might know. Um, so that's the way that folks can okay, get tickets. Okay, I'm sorry I misspoke. No, no problem. No, that's fine. Grace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let, let's, before we, we go into these live readings, let's talk about each of your roles. There's three of you here. Koya, we know that you're directing the piece, and then Sandra and Kimberly, you are performers. Performers, oh, you're cast members. Yes, that's right. Which meant that you wrote the piece that we're about to do together. One of the pieces I wrote, and some of uh, the other stuff is collaborative, so we all wrote it together. Well, let's listen to some of it so that way we can get some reaction. And if you want to react, 773-777-1450. Um, last episode of Club Kids Radio, it, only on 1450, though, because we'll live on at www.wakeupdancing.com. Not wake up screaming like we talked about earlier. So I'm just going to sit back and, and watch you guys do your thing. All right. Uh, well, now we have to envision lights and <laughs> seatings, and you guys are doing choreography while you're reading this stuff. Chicago is a city stretched end to end where politics aren't always fair and the traffic never dies. Green and gray, I know this city. I claimed it mine. Chicago is patience. Time to cross neighborhood after neighborhood. Tolerate traffic. Traverse miles. And miles. And miles of families and stories and communities until you finally get home. Home. Chicago is no y New York. We're not drunk on self-image formed fast from cultural production. This city is humble and real. A shining jewel oasis in a sea of corn and Confederate flag. Chicago is where the South meets North. The Great Mississippi shakes hands with State Street. Where collard greens taste no different whether it's in a condo or a country shed. Great migration real. This city, a mind game that saves us from really living in the Midwest. Or the North. Or America. Even people from here aren't from here. A generation from Mississippi, Mexico, Mumbai, Minnesota. Chicago is a human stew bubbling over itself where a single family home has four generations living in it. 
where tourists stand transfixed by ten blocks of magnificence as if they're seeing something real, and children navigate crookedly cracked sidewalks and alleyways to school. Chicago is full of money and no money lives. Chicago is blues cool, summertime hot, and let's not put it off any longer. Chicago is cold. Mean cold. Lurking even in summertime cold. Ugly cold. Makes you want to give up cold. Somebody slapped your mama cold. An abusive relationship, kids in the sto toy store summers, so many loud colors and bright noises, diverse and fun and fast that you could forget every year. Every year. How bleeping cold the winters are. Until they come again and again, you find yourself waiting at a bus stop, the wind burning your nose cold and your ribs chattering while you watch one, two, three buses go the opposite way until you see even one. Even one. Coming your way. Chicago is raw skin. Cracked lips and prickly wind. Chicago is masochists and character builders knee deep in snow. And summer like taking a lover warm and delicious. Chicago is mental illness, schizophrenic weather, borderline personality disorders, the boundaries between neighborhoods, bipolar as projects next to million dollar condos. Chicago is breathing memories, telling our histories on street signs, historic names like beacons, King Drive for blacks, Adams for whites, as if the founding fathers would be proud. Chicago is Chicago pride, but North Side hates South Side, hates West Side sometimes. Chicago is an exposed beer belly in summer, unashamed of its celebration of food, proud of its unwaxed chest and cheap cut off shorts, proud to be nothing but itself. Chicago is Polish, Harold's chicken, jerk chicken. Curry chicken, tamales, beef patties, watermelon, Thai treats, encased meats, eloteros, paleteros, food, food, food. That is hilarious. <laughs> I was trying to hold in my my reaction to it. By the way, it's zero degrees um, Celsius. Thirty-two had to leave. Cold. Cold. I'm slap my mama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching and I'm listening, and, and it sounded as if it was three separate pieces. And then somehow you had to weave them together as director. Is this, am I getting the right image? Yeah, of this? except it was seven different pieces. So we had everybody start with the prompt Chicago is and write about what Chicago is and then find a way to put it all together so that everyone keeps their distinctive voice. Um, we have seven people in the show, but it feels like also one, one thing together. So even watching you now was kind of fun because the mic is bouncing. If this was like TV, you'd see little balls bouncing from <laughs> mic to mic while you guys are doing your thing. When you're on stage doing tour guides, there's seven of you on stage, and then you're 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 not even spitting this out because this is not a Run DMC thing. You're actually just performing this. There's no attitude. There's pride. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's there's we're on stage the whole time, so there's not like from backstage. And we're gonna be on stage the whole show. No brequisito. No brequisito. <laughs> no. No. Why is cracking that whip? No. I know. I'm just kidding. Only a sweatshop on stage. <laughs> so at what point did you guys decide to tackle the White Sox Cubs rivalry? Uh, oh, it happens. We have a whole piece of well, it. I just heard because you guys said North Side, South Side. What's up? <laughs> it was organic. So. I mean, somebody actually wrote about that, so it's in there too. And then I tried to put somebody <laughs> else who wouldn't write about it as a Cubs fan and the, to be a supporting card, and she said no. I will not even play a Cubs fan in the show. I have to be on the sock side of the stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. You should require her to wear, like, red and blue. Oh, See if she understands. She was hardcore about it. So now, this it. doesn't open until this weekend, the 3rd and the 4th. So have you been able to preview this in front of the audience to see the reactions? I'm, I'm envisioning an audience in which you guys are going to have certain points that you make, and the crowd's going to, there's going to be a grasp or a groan or a cheer or a fist or something. Yeah, I think that will happen. We, we've had a couple of readings of the show around the city, and people definitely, they, they take their sides early. <laughs> so. Well, this is neat, Mammy, and, and it's a, a really u unique idea, which I think a lot of us should appreciate, because it's, for some reason, people have always bragged about their areas, people have bragged about their town, like kind of town, and all that other stuff, but to do it in this form, I've not heard of that before. I think it's pretty neat. Good. And now we're going to hear it. Now you, you, you guys have other pieces, and we don't want to give away the whole show, so we'll go ahead and go to yogaconflict.org in order to um, find out a little bit more. How, um, how reasonable is it in terms of prices I'm looking just to make certain that it's family-friendly and everything else? 
It's definitely family friendly. We have general admission tickets for fifteen dollars. Uh, we also have a limited number of student tickets, um, and those are seven fifty. And there's a code that you have to put in for that, and that's alleyways. Alleyways is the code for the seven fifty uh, tickets. And these for are student students. tickets. Yeah. Student tickets. Yeah. So the, um, Amanda, who's sitting behind you, she's nowhere near a microphone. Um, she was listening during one of the times that you were here, Sandra, mm -hmm. and she was so into what's happening with theater and, and trying to get involved. Um, this is one way for young people to get involved, is, is watch, respond, and maybe get involved yourself. This, this is a nice exercise. It's educational, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people are going to learn a lot about poetry, about <laughs> Chicago, and the Guild Complex. It's a great introduction to the work that they do. They have a lot of different kinds of programs around the city, including um, a the Gwendolyn Brooks competition where a lot, of, yeah, a lot of young poets have kind of I launched themselves. I won the Gwendolyn Brooks poetry competition years ago. And, and Stephanie, Stephanie Gentry Fernandez is also a former winner and she's also in the cast of Tour Guides. That is cool. So, so she, she's something she'd be on the younger side. How, um, what kind of generational span is there? In the show or at in, the In the show. Okay. <laughs> I um, think I'm the old one. How old? I don't know. I'm the, the old one. Old. I'm the old so one. So it's not a very broad span. <laughs> uh, it's, I would definitely say it's the uh, 20s, 30s. Because yeah. there'd be different reflections depending on, on how old you are, which that would be an interesting dynamic too. Yeah, that would be the next one. So people can write in. We have people writing in on Facebook telling us their version of Chicago too. This is just a start. But you know what I think that is, if you're a Chicagoan, these are universal themes that you're going to deal with being on the subway and walking down the street and I think it's cross generational, cross you know, cross everything. Mm -hmm. It's just Chicago a Chicagoan, being a Chicagoan, so and I've got to give a shout out to the folks who are not natives of Chicago. <laughs> we're also represented in the piece too, you know, coming to this city and falling in love with it. Um, for those who can relate to that as well. So then you, Kimberly, are not originally from here? I'm not. I'm so, not. So I should ask you this question then since you're not you're not one of us. <laughs> Could nice this party. concept work in another setting, in a Minnesota, in a New York, in, in Des Moines, Iowa? Because Chicago is one of those cities that it's divided, which is good, and it's divided, which is bad. But there's so much going on here, it's just this melting pot that it, it, seemingly there's material everywhere. I wonder if this could work somewhere else. That's a tough Tough question to answer. I mean, I, I think that this piece really reflects the diversity of Chicago, and I don't mean just ethnic diversity. I mean, just when you put a bunch of people in a small space like a city, you know, there's just so much uh, uh, friction that happens, positive and negative. So I think it's something that's probably unique to Chicago in the way that, that we live together and the, the impact of the weather and how that makes us have to interact with each other and those sorts of things. So then who does the, the editing? Who decides what stays and what goes, and this language might be strong, or somebody won't understand if you say, I finna do something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do all of that, uh, but I try to do it in relationship and collaboration with everybody. I don't, I'm trying not to be a dictator, but sometimes I have to be. Like Sandra says, I don't like to think about cracking a whip, but I have no, to, I to line it up. Not line it up. Um, I also think Chicago, you know, it's one of the most segregated cities in the country. And so what I love about this piece is we do have people of really different racial, ethnic backgrounds, different perspectives coming together and working together, which we don't see a lot in Chicago, you know. Um, I've spent a lot of time doing, you know, Latina theater, Latina poetry, the Latina theater scene. And so it's, it's really fun for me to collaborate with people who are really entrenched in their own scene, too. Well, that's another thing that I've noticed. I, I look at the cast list. And Sandra, I know with Vida Bella, you've done a lot of all women stuff. Mm -hmm. You've got men this time around. Yeah. Is that a different dynamic for you, or does it enhance things? No, I think it enhances things. I love, I love the mix. I love the poets. I love. It's just been such a wonderful, like mind-blowing experience. It's awesome. And this is something that the 